Welcome to the Not Just a Pony Ride podcast, presented to you by Hetcher University. If you've landed here, you're probably passionate about how horses help people. Whether you're an instructor, therapist, in the business, or have experienced equine assisted services yourself, we're glad you're here. Join us as we talk about the benefits, the science, to-dos, how-tos, and all of the reasons why what we do is so much more than just a pony ride. And now, from the Hetra campus in Gretna, Nebraska, here's your host, occupational therapist Katie King. Hey everyone, today I have an informative episode for you. I have Christy Landwehr, CEO of the Certified Horsemanship Association, or the CHA. Now, the CHA is an organization that offers an impressive number of certifications for all kinds of equine professionals. I mean, everything from trail guide certifications to equine facility manager certifications. And of course, we talked about the certification for instructors of riders with disabilities or the IRD. I think that the CHA has so much to offer for so many different reasons, but many of their certifications are actually a level one through four system that's based on the level of ability of the instructor. And Christy really just walked us through what I thought might be the most important uh, certification for our audience, the IRD. And she talked about what that process looks like, as well as how to find one that's near you. Um, she also talked about all the perks that the CHA has to offer with their membership. Anyway, Christy was a delight to talk to, and she's very well accomplished horsewoman in her own right. She is, of course, the CEO and holds many certifications through the CHA, including master level writing instructor. You can find her contact information in the show notes. So I would encourage any of you to reach out to her with questions. She was so easy to talk to and very helpful in my journey to learn more about the CHA today. So enjoy. Welcome to the show, Christy. How are you today? I'm so good. Thank you so much for having me on. This is exciting. Absolutely. Well, I am thrilled to share you with our audience and your organization. So why don't you introduce yourself and tell everybody who you are? Sure. So my name is Christy Landwehr, and I'm the Chief Executive Officer for the Certified Horsemanship Association. The CHA is a wonderful association that helps um, all types of professionals in our industry. Do you want to tell us a little bit about the CHA and kind of how you ended up on our podcast? <laughs> sure, I sure can. So um, Certified Horsemanship Association has been around a lot longer than I've been alive, which I'm happy to say I'm not the founder. Uh, it's been around since the 1960s, and I'm not that old yet. So and we started out as camp horsemanship associations. So we were for camp executive directors in YMCA, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, things like that, that basically said, all right, uh, the kiddos are coming soon. We've got to go ahead and make sure that they know how to do horsemanship skills. We're going to hire some advanced counselors. So this gentleman who founded us uh, would set out just an ad in the paper at that time for camp counselors. And he'd say, okay, you need to be advanced. Well, as you know, in our industry, one trail ride and you're advanced, right? Yeah. <laughs> so they would come and uh, they wouldn't even know how to put the halter on. It would be unicorn time with, you know, the lead rope coming out of the forehead. I mean, just bad. He'd be like, go get the paint out of the field. And they go, I don't know what a paint is. And they get the bay. I mean, they just didn't know anything. Wow. And he said, oh, we have to figure out a way. So he got together a bunch of other camps in his area and created our composite manual of horsemanship, which is still around today with many revisions since then. And he created our level one through four, basically as a staff training. So now if somebody's certified level one in our riding instructor program, we've morphed. We have a whole lot more programs than just riding instructor now. But if you are level one, you teach walk trot and you teach it well. If you're level two, you teach walk trot beginning canter and lope well. If you're level three, now you're starting to do simple changes. You're starting to do a basic reining pattern. You're starting to do a horsemanship pattern. You're starting to teach jumping in the English side. And then level four is your horse showing. You're full-blown flying lead changes. You're really coaching people at a high level. So that's kind of how that came to be. So that has been our main thing all this time. And then in the 80s, we changed our name from Camp Horsemanship Association to Certified, kept the CHA, but did Certified Horsemanship because about 40% of our members right now are in uh, camping. And the rest are independent riding instructors. They might work at a lesson barn. They might travel around. They might do it out of their own property. So it's really changed and morphed quite a bit. Yeah, it sounds like it. So how many different, I mean, different types of certifications do you guys offer? I know that you just mentioned a few, you know, the four levels, but there's, you know, kind of more that you guys do as well, right? 
Yes. So our big one is still 80% of our certifications a year, and we do about 80 a year all around the U.S. and Canada. And 80, um, out of those 80, 80% is what we call our English Western Instructor. And during a five-day certification, a person can achieve um, English up to level four with flat work or jumping, and then they can also achieve Western up to level four. So you can come out with, let's say, a Western level three and an English level one. So only in five days. So you don't have to keep coming back to achieve the level. So that's our biggest one. Mm -hmm. Our next biggest one is our equine facility manager program. So this is for all you bar managers out there. So people that run a breeding operation, maybe you run a boarding barn, those kinds of things. And in our EFM program, that one is only three days long, but you can also get up to level four um, through that process. And then we also do one called Day Ride Trail Guide Certification. It's a three-day program for those trail guide operators, like in your state parks, your trail guide operators, maybe at a dude ranch, things like that. Um, a lot of camps utilize that one too, because they only do trail riding. Then there is seasonal equestrian staff. This is gonna be for those that still run a camp that want to just have a closed clinic, not open to the public, just for your camp counselors to be up to speed for the summer. And then we do a college university program. We work really closely with many colleges and universities that have equine programs. And our materials will get incorporated into the professor's lectures. Our lectures that we normally do <clears throat> during our certifications will also be included, things like that. And then um, we do an instructors for riders with disabilities program where we work uh, closely actually with the past standards and our own standards for that one. And in that one, it's a six day certification where a person can achieve a level in both physical and cognitive. So if you're working primarily with folks that have physical disabilities, you can get assistant up to level three in that. If you're working with people who primarily have cognitive things going on, again, assistant up to level three in that. So many times, you know, are not, you're not necessarily good at both. You might just be good at one, but you can certainly dabble in both that way and see where you're at. So that's that one. And then we have um, Trail Guide, which is a full five-day program where you pack in the wilderness and you literally put up a wall tent, you dutch oven cook, you high line, you picket line, you hobble your horses, you have pack mules, you set up your panniers, you have to pack hay in. I mean, that's a legit, you know, fun one for those that like that kind of thing. Wow. Um, and then we do, isn't that fun? Yeah. And then we do a driving and certified driver for those that drive their horses with carts. And then we do vaulting as well. So very diverse. There's a lot going on at CHA. Yes, it is not boring. No. <laughs> so with that many different types of certifications, I mean, you guys set up, how many times a year do you set up those certifications? I mean, I can't imagine that they happen, you know, every weekend <laughs> throughout the year. It probably takes quite a while to prep and, and organize those. So how often do you offer certifications? I mean, it, it's probably varies, but. Yeah, I would say right now, most people like to do them April, May, and June because they're getting ready for the busy summer season. So we are right smack in the middle of our busiest time for sure. Um, and then we become more year round though. Like those that have an indoor arena, things like that, they're off season, they like it in the winter. And if they have an indoor, we have no problem with that. Um, so you can really host them anytime. So if you get on our website, which is cha.horse, H-O-R-S-E, not .com or .org, just .horse, you can find all of them and they vary all throughout the country and um, up in Canada. Do you have, what does your staff look like at CHA then? I'm assuming you have to have experts kind of in all of those fields and who do you hire to teach all those certifications? Yes. Yeah, so we have kind of a unique program. So I'm the CEO, so I'm a full-time staff. We have Terry Weaver, who's our membership services director, and she's located in Kentucky at our national office. And then she's full-time and then she has a full-time um, assistant that helps her. Everybody else is a contractor who does the business side. So like our graphic on, um, artist is contractor, our social media person, things like that. And then we have 150 roughly certifiers in each of the different programs, primarily in the English Western instructor one, but in the others, they are 1099 contractors for us because the host site actually hires the certifier. Okay. So CHA does not get involved in that. That is something where the host site says, hey, what are you going to charge us? The certifier comes up with their fee. We do guidelines on what they should charge, but it's primarily up to the host site to have that contract with that certifier. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then the um, you have your not you said the national offices in Kentucky. Do you guys ever host certifications there or do you primarily go to other people? Yeah, we have no horses. 
So we are simply a building in like a strip mall. So no, we definitely don't host any. Um, they are hosted everywhere though. If you look on our website, there is not a province besides maybe Quebec and New Brunswick and things that haven't hosted in the past. And we're pretty much in all 50 states at this point too. Um, now, if you don't see one right now, it means maybe they're not hosting one this year. They might in the future, but you can look at past ones by location and see where they've been. And then you can certainly, you know, contact that host site and say, hey, you're going to host one this year. And they'll, they'll tell you yes or no. Very cool. I mean, other than the wide variety of certifications, I mean, I myself have not heard of a certifying body that does as many different certifications as you guys do, especially when it comes to like the trail and, and guided things like that. So what makes you guys different than other certifying bodies that are out there for horse professionals? Yeah, pretty much you just hit the nail on the head. So you've got, you know, Path International that very much does the instructors for riders with disabilities, right? Mm -hmm. And then you have um, USDF that primarily does dressage, USHJA that primarily does hunter jumper. We are one stop shop. We are all breed, all discipline, and we do not care exactly how you teach anything. There's not a certain way to teach first canner for us. There's not a certain way to teach anything. There's, is it safe? Is it effective? Is it fun? Does it have a lot of theory behind what you're doing and a lot of hows and whys to teach your students? And that's how we evaluate you. So you don't have to read our composite manual of horsemanship and teach out of that. As a matter of fact, I don't necessarily, and I'm a riding instructor too, um, on the side, teach out of our manual. There might be a totally different way that I want to teach something, and that's really okay. And our other thing that differentiates us is we do not certify the person that privately teaches. So even our Instructors for Riders with Disabilities program is group. And for us, a group is three or more up. So you have private is one person, semi-private is two people, and group is going to be three or more. And that's required for our certifications for all of them. Um, now, vaulting, of course, you're automatically a group because they're standing, waiting, even though you're only using one horse, right? Trail rides, you have to have three or more to get certified with us up. So we really believe in that. And our reason for that is because we really feel that if you can teach one up, you can probably handle um, maybe more, but we don't know for sure. But if you can teach five up, we know for sure you can handle one. So I think the you know majority of our audience or those folks that are listening would be probably under the umbrella of teaching the individuals with disabilities and that certification. Mm -hmm. um, would you want to talk through kind of maybe that certification process just a little bit to kind of give us an idea of what how that might look different than other certifications that are out there? Absolutely. So we get asked that a lot, especially in relation to PATH, right? Any gala and some of the others that are out there. Um, so our big thing is you as an instructor are teaching recreational riding and good horsemanship with a lot of safety and your client just happens to have a disability. Right. So we don't focus on the disability as much as we focus on the horsemanship and the safety and the education in that way. Now, obviously we use the past standards just like they use our composite manual of horsemanship. We have a partnership with them where if you've gone through certain stages of any of our programs, EFM, vaulting, EWI, any of them, they will let you not take certain aspects of theirs because they know that ours is very thorough in the horsemanship and the safety because that's what, who we are, right? Um, so for our instructors with riders with disabilities, there is a, a written test at each level that you have to pass um, with a certain percentage at each level. Then there is a riding test. We do want you to be able to ride uh, one level higher than you're certified so that you could hop on and show a skill to your client. However, with that in mind, we have a special considerations policy. So let's say you're getting up there in years, you're like, ah, my hip and my knee and I don't really ride anymore. We have no problem. You just have to be able to show that you've ridden at one point or another with, um, oh, a video, maybe show wins, maybe a letter from past riding instructors, things like that. And you can totally not ride during the certification. Then you teach, teach, and teach some more. And all of our lessons are done in a 15 minute format. So you use the host site courses, you use the host site pack, and you start off in our instructors of riders with disabilities, riding for one another, not role playing, just teaching one another so that we know that you can teach anyone, right? You can just get out there and just start teaching. And we know that you have the safety and the horsemanship skills. And then the center or the program will go ahead and bring in their own riders. So they have to be a program that has both uh, folks that have some cognitive things going on as well as folks that have some physical. And then we focus a lot on, of course, the mounting ramp and the dismounting ramp. 
uh, lifts if there's a lift there so that you can do proper wheelchair, you know, mount and dismount. And then you actually teach those riders as well. And this is all done in a 15 minute format because if we did a whole hour, you would be there forever. So we do a 15 minute format. We don't allow more than eight participants at a certification. There can be auditors that are just watching, but only eight participants. So you have one teaching, one assisting, three up if you're doing the part where it's um, not the clients yet. And then the others are preparing for their talk. Um, sometimes we'll do four or five up too, if there's enough horses and tack and things to do all of that. And then during that 15 minutes, you demonstrate your teaching skills on a topic that's given to you or you choose, depending on what stage of the program and the less uh, the week you're in. At the beginning, we let you choose. And then at the end, we choose for you where we see your holes to make sure that you get those holes taken care of. Mm -hmm. And then um, when that happens, then at the end of the 15 minutes, you self-evaluate. You say, these are the things I think I did well. Then your assistant instructor evaluates you. Then all of your riders evaluate you. And then the two certifiers, we always have two certifiers, they both evaluate you. So you have instant feedback. You instantly go, oh, I could work on that, I see. Or, oh, I'm doing that well, I'll keep doing more of that. We do not certify by video at all. Um, our board has always said no thank you to that. They believe in actually seeing you do it. They feel that if uh, you have a problem uh, while you're teaching, you will probably stop your video camera and reshoot that before you send it to us. And we want to see you handle the problem. We yeah. want to see you handle the spooking horse. We want to see you handle the trip of the horse. We want to see you handle the rider that screams. We want to see this. Mm -hmm. So for us, uh, video is not an option right now. We only do it, you know, live and in person at all of our different host sites. And teaching individuals with disability, that certification process is a, I can't remember, did you say four day? Six day. Six day. So then you can certify through all the levels. Is there really like, I, for me, I have like a horrible testing anxiety, right? So this, the way that you describe it sounds more like a very, like a long, um, you know, six days of learn, you know, really learning and getting to practice your skills and um, you guys being present to help troubleshoot and that sort of thing. Is there any, is there a day where you come in and, and it's truly, you know, no one, you can't, don't get to phone a friend. You don't get to do anything. You like come in and you test and then they tell you yes or no, or is it sort of you're evaluated throughout the whole six day process? You're evaluated throughout the whole six day process. And even though we try to keep education separate from certification, you're going to learn. Right. You're absolutely going to learn because you're going to watch all your other fellow peers teaching and go, oh, that's a great way to teach that. Why have I never thought of that? Right. You're going to hear the evaluations from the certifiers for everybody else. You're going to say, oh, wow, I never thought of that. That's a great idea. So, and always us as certifiers, we always learn too. I mean, you just can't help. There's definitely a lot of learning. And our certifiers are required to teach mandatory lectures during the six days. So for example, in our IRD program, they're gonna be required to teach um, horse and herd management. They're gonna be required to teach, oh, just a variety of different topics. And so there's that education that also of course takes place. So for those that do have test anxiety, yeah, there are written tests and yes, you have to pass with a certain percentage, but I wouldn't stress. We don't have a time limit on the written test like we do the lessons. The lessons we definitely have a time limit on, mm -hmm. but we don't on the written test. And so people normally have good success. This episode of the Not Just a Pony Ride podcast is sponsored in part by Equiforce. Equiforce is a database that allows you to track every facet of your organization from horse, donor, and volunteer management to scheduling grant tracking, incident reports, and tracking participant progress too. This is not a one-size-fits-all setup. Instead, Equiforce personally works with you to learn how your facility functions and takes note of your specific terminology so that they can create a unique system to match the needs of your organization. And of course, Equiforce provides an ongoing training and support so that your database can grow with you. Visit them at www.equiforce.com. That's E-Q-U-I-F-O-R-C-E.com. This episode is also sponsored in part by Wooden Horse Corporation and the Equisizer. The Equisizer is a handcrafted, non-motorized mechanical horse used by Equine Assisted Service Programs Worldwide. 
The equisizer requires no electricity, tools, or maintenance and can be used indoors or out for evaluations, warm-ups, stretching, mounting, dismounting practice, and volunteer training, beer, and build confidence with students, clients, and volunteers. It can easily carry the weight of two adults, offering the unique option to ride tandemly. To learn more about the equisizer, visit equisizer.com. That's E-Q-U-I-C-I-Z-E-R.com. Very cool. Yeah, I appreciate that process. I'm an occupational therapist by trade, so I love to learn and yeah. having that six days to to really learn and, and flex your skills and practice is important, I think. Do you guys do education around disability or do you require your, um, you know, people that are coming in to certify with sort of a baseline knowledge of that? Or how do you handle, you know, teaching the disability part of it? Because that's still definitely a component where we have to learn to adapt and manage some of those things as well. Very much so. So before you even come and attempt to get assistant, which means that you have to be in the arena with someone else while teaching or level one, you have to have 25 hours of already teaching riders with disabilities. That is the requirement to come in. Um, and then you also at every level have to have a few more hours. So, and this is one of our only certifications where we require that. Our English Western instructor, you can come in cold turkey. And for some that have never even taught a riding lesson, if you're a really good, let's say, oh, junior high teacher, elementary school teacher, high school teacher, college teacher, you can probably squeeze out a level one. Um, mm -hmm. You're probably not gonna be able to teach a group to canter. That's not gonna go well for you, but you can probably handle teaching them to walk all as a group. And then in level two, we need to see them trot all as a group. And in level three, they need to canter all as a group. So it'll start falling apart with you if you've never taught before, because obviously as the horses and riders go faster and they're role playing for you, they're gonna role play, grab the horn, put their toes down, you know, all that stuff, and you've yeah. gotta coach it. And if you can't coach it, it's not going to go well. But in our Instructors of Riders with Disabilities program, because we're actually working with the actual clients from the centers, we absolutely require you to have knowledge prior to coming in. That is a must. Yeah, that makes sense. So then when you go to a six-day uh, certification, you said that there is an option to certify through all of the levels. So you kind of come out with, you know, whatever level that you are obviously safe and competent to teach. Very much so. So some people, let's say have never really taught physical disabilities at all, but they learn so much through the process that they can mount and dismount from a ramp, they might get assistance mm -hmm. in that side. And then they're gonna, maybe they're more egala, right? Maybe they do a whole lot more of kind of the groundwork side of things. Now remember, we teach 100% mounted. So mm -hmm. you are gonna have to go ahead. Now there is a ground lesson that you teach. So we normally teach three um, mounted and one ground. Is kind of how it works. And in IRD, you might get an extra, you know, mounted as well. So we are primarily mounted. But if you work more with, let's say, folks that have PTSD or you're doing a wounded warriors program at your center or what have you, then you might end up, again, physical assistant and maybe as high as all the way to three in cognitive. And you will achieve that in six days. There's no coming back, coming back. Now, you can certainly come back if it didn't work well, right? And if it, well, you didn't achieve the goal that you feel like you're teaching, then certainly you can go study more and um, practice more and teach more and then come back and get certified, hopefully at a higher level. Um, for those out there that have been teaching a bunch in this space or any of the spaces I just mentioned, whether it's equine facility manager and you're just very good at that or what have you, you can come out your very first time too as a certifier for us. So as a certifier for us and instructors for riders with disabilities, you need to earn a level three in both cognitive and physical. We don't just do one or the other, it has to be both. And you need to have really good eval skills. So remember when I talked about each of the riders get to evaluate and then each of the participants evaluate before the two certifiers? Well, if you as a participant in the certification say what I as a certifier was thinking, I'll be like, yes they can be a certifier one day. I didn't even have to say it, right? It's already been <laughs> said. So we really look for really good evaluation skills and then somebody can come out of our certifications with a certifier status as well. Very interesting. Okay. Well, so, and then you had mentioned just a little bit um, that you just CHA in general do all mounted certification or do you have something like um, you know, like an equine assisted learning or, you know, mental health and learning. Cause I know that ground programming, especially with mental health has been so popular really in the last year, especially with the pandemic. Do you guys do any kind of um, certification for that? We do not. No, it's 100% mounted. Our instructor Toretta's with disabilities. There is a ground lesson that you teach during it, but no, you have to have had some practice teaching mounted prior to coming to ours at this point. But you know, <laughs> 
you heard all the certifications we just mentioned. <laughs> Who knows what the future holds? Our uh, board of directors is very active. We have many committees, our education and training committee, our research and development committee, and they're constantly surveying our membership and others for what programs might be needed out there. And if we fill, fill a hole, we're happy to fill it. Um, I guess my big idea as a CEO in the horse industry is this industry, whether it's instructors or riders with disabilities or whether it's English Western instruction or whatever it is, we reinvent the wheel all the time. We'll say, oh, well, we're not very happy with this. So we're gonna take our toys and go over to this sandbox and create our own organization. Or we say, there's a lot of fragmentation that way, right? And a lot of uh, reinventing the wheel. So our big thing is we don't wanna do that. If we feel like there's already groups out there that are doing something well, let them do it. Now, do we believe in healthy competition? Sure we do, absolutely. You should have a choice of where you go get certified and what you get certified in. But as I already explained from our IRD program with PATH, it's very different. So we have quite a few of our instructors that are also PATH and quite a few PATH that are also IRD because it's different. So that's, that, that's kind of our big thing is we just try to really stay true to our mission which is uh, we change lives through safe experiences with horses. So in keeping with our mission, if it doesn't fit education and good horsemanship skills and safety, then we don't have any desire to do it. So that's kind of our big thing. But no, you're right. I think a program like that might be coming down the pike, possibly at some point, yeah. <laughs> Always room for growth. So yeah. with the CHA, um, obviously certifications are a big part of that. What else might somebody get out of, you know, being a member with you guys or, you know, being certified through you guys? Do you have other perks as well? Yes. So we have, if you go to cha.horse, the whole education tab and under that edu education tab, we have some free stuff. So please get on there for that too. We have right. um, webinars that we conduct all the time. They're, hours, they're an hour in length. And they're on, oh my gosh, every topic under the sun from teaching a timid rider to um, how to market your business to business skills in general, to insurance, a bunch of things like that. Um, then we have a streaming video service where we will video all of our sessions at our international conference that goes on once a year and it's in different places around the country in the fall. And then we'll put those in our streaming video platform. And there's five different aspects of that platform. There's ones that's just for riding instructors. There's ones that are more lecture-based components, kind of for any prep body that owns a horse, uh, things like that. And most of those are free because they're on our YouTube channel. Um, and then we also have a paid service, but it's only like $5 for a video to watch. So we have that. Um, and we just do a whole lot of education, not only our manuals. We have a trail manual. We have an um, equine professional manual, the art of teaching riding. Then we have, of course, our composite I mentioned with our levels, and that's like a self-guided tour through host horsemanship. If you own a horse, you get our composite. There's a written test and a riding test at the end of each level. You can take them and go, yep, I'm ready for the next level. So that's kind of a cool, a cool manual for folks. Um, and then we have regional conferences around the country too. For those that can't come to the international conference, we have regional either by Zoom or in-person conferences for folks to attend. And then our big international conference, what differentiates us from almost every single other conference I've ever been to is you have one day of hotel and then two days of absolute riding horses all the time. So we go to places that have great school horses. So uh, last year we went to um, Fort Worth Stockyards. We were in the actual stockyards. We use the drover horses that drive the longhorns down the street as the Western horses. Very cool. It's is that neat? And then we use English horses from a local CHA barn that brought in his English horses. This year we are in uh, Tennessee. We're at Middle Tennessee State University in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, and we're using their IHSA, Intercollegiate, Intercollegiate um, Horsemanship Show Association horses, right? So we're excited about that. Um, and you ride. So you ride with all of our instructors. So you ride, let's say it's how to teach flying lead changes better. Well, you'll get on and ride a flying lead change on a school horse and you'll be getting taught. Now, the speaker though will not say, all right, this is a riding lesson you people in the audience are watching. They're looking at the audience and the speakers are simply, I mean, the riders are simply their prop. Mm -hmm. So they'll make them go do something. So it's not like you're watching riding lessons, you're being taught in the audience right. and the riders are there to demonstrate the skills. So that's fun. So for folks that want to come ride, you know, they get to ride in at least one session that they sign up for sometimes two, if there's not very many folks that want to ride, but mm -hmm. it is a, a fun interactive 
conference for sure. And anyone can come. You don't have to be a CHA member. It's open to the public. Yes, I love that. I think that there should be more of that in our field where we get to learn live because so many of us are teaching so many lessons and doing so many things that, you know, how often do we actually get to get on and ride and be like, okay, you know, and all of the horses are different. So even here at Hetra, we encourage our, our instructors to get on and ride every now and then in conditioning or whatever it is so that you might have a horse with some kind of weird quirk. Like he doesn't like to pick up the left leader. We know whatever it is. And you can really feel that and, and feel how, how am I going to explain this to my riders and that type of thing. And so I think being able to watch somebody ride or actually do the riding at a conference where you can learn too from professionals is, is key. Yeah. That's that kinesthetic learner, right? Really yeah. needs that opportunity and the visual learner too. It's not just auditory lecture lands, right? It really is good to get out of that. So, Katie, you need to think about Hetra hosting one of our certifications. <laughs> that would be great. We're right here in the middle of America, too. So it's a good place for everybody to come. <laughs> That's right. That would be fun. Well, thank you so much for uh, sitting down with me today. I know you're a busy lady. You're getting ready for probably your busy season there, getting ramped up with all your certifications. So I appreciate your time. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks so much for having me on. And again, anyone just go to cha.horse if you want to find out more. Um, our website is very interactive and pretty easy to follow. And you can find my contact information on there. And I do return all my calls and all my emails. So if you want to reach out, just please feel free. Yes, your website is beautiful. It was easy to find you and find somebody to chat with today from CHA. So I appreciate that. Okay, before I let you go, um, I finish every episode with the same question for my guests. And that is, why do you keep doing what you're doing with the CHA and, and with horsemanship in general, Christy? Why do you keep doing what you do? Well, I grew up in Southern California, and we just happened to have a horse pasture in front of us at the time, and I just wanted to pet him on the nose. That's all I wanted to do. <laughs> so when my uh, parents saw this when I was six, they gave me horseback riding lessons, and I've been hooked ever since. It is a disease with no cure. So I feel <laughs> extremely lucky to be able to work in the industry that I have passion for. I feel like I never work because all I'm doing is talking about something I love so much. And so that's really the primary thing. You know, being in the horse industry is a blessing. Um, I hung a shingle at 16 and absolutely did it the wrong way and called myself a riding instructor and charged 10 bucks an hour on my Wonder Pony popcorn. He was a POA and he was great. And that's what I did. And I had all these people start coming to me. And then I had one of the fathers one day go, you have insurance, right? To teach, right? And I was 18 at that time. I go, I, what? I don't even know what that is. Absolutely. I just started, I was like, oh, I'm on a learning curve here. So got insurance. <laughs> I've had insurance, of course, ever since. Um, learned about that whole process. So it's all been kind of a journey. So I am an all breed kind of girl. I don't think one breeds better than another. I am an all discipline girl. There is not a discipline that I haven't tried. I've tried them all. And some I like much more than others, but I never miss an opportunity to hop on a horse and do a certain discipline. I just love them all. So running CHA is such a pleasure for me because we are truly all breed, all discipline. So I think that's truly what keeps me going all the time. Very cool. What's your favorite discipline to ride? I knew you were going to tell me that. How about this? How about favorite discipline to teach? I am a big okay. fan of you should learn English first and you should learn in a dressage saddle because transitioning from dressage over to anything, easy. Transitioning from Western to English hard, transitioning from hunter jumper to Western hard, right? All these things. But I feel like dressage is a universal language. Um, I really do. And that's what I like teaching the most. Oh, well, I am twofold glad you said that. But also as a girl who grew up on a, a ranch in Western Nebraska, yeah, I'm not thrilled you said that because I don't like to write English or dressage. <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> It is, and it's hard to transition. It really is. But I just feel all my beginners that have learned in my dressage saddle have really no problem riding anything else, whereas the other way around is a little bit more tough. So that's what I like to teach the most. As far as me riding all of them, I mean, I really can't pick. But as far as teaching, I have, I have chosen. Yeah. Very good. All right, Christy. Well, we'll be in touch soon, I'm sure. I uh, can't thank you enough for sharing CHA's story and I will link uh, all the things that you recommended uh, from CHA in the show notes below. So if you're listening, go ahead and scroll down and, and check out CHA online and social media too. Thank you so much for having me today. Mm -hmm. Bye, Christy. Thanks for listening to another episode. Until the next one launches, stay connected to our community by joining the Not Just a Pony Ride Facebook group. There we share exclusive educational content 
answer your questions, and review new and exciting developments for the EAS community. Don't forget, if you have suggestions for future episode topics or a lead on a great guest that you think our audience would enjoy, click on the link in the show notes or visit us at hetrauniversity.org. This podcast is presented by Hetra University, an educational arm of the Heartland Equine Therapeutic Writing Academy. Hetra University's mission is to provide high-quality educational offerings to our participants and the EAS community. If you'd like to help us work toward our mission, you can make a donation by visiting us online at hetra.org. Again, I can't thank you all enough for helping Hetra change lives one stride at a time.